Hello, everyone. So in this uh, topic today, we are going to be talking about what happens if your hypothyroidism goes untreated and undiagnosed. So with me, we have Angela Brown. She is a functional medicine nutritionist, and she helps women manage their thyroid as well as balance their hormones. Welcome, Angela. Hi there. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So let's just start from the beginning as to what is hypothyroidism? Sure. So um, hypothyroidism is basically when the thyroid itself is functionally suboptimally. So it's not functioning at the best rate. Um, so it's a sluggish thyroid. Um, typically, the diagnosis comes with a TSH. They usually get TSH, um, thyroid stimulating hormone checked on a blood test. And typically, um, it's elevated, so the doctor will um, give a diagnosis of hypothyroidism. Um, uh, Hashimoto's is an aspect of that. It is um, the autoimmune side of hypothyroidism where there's antibodies present. So it's still hypothyroidism. Um, you just kind of, the, the plan of attack with it's a little bit different um, depending on if you have antibodies present or not, but either way, the thyroid is slow. I see. But we are talking about hyperthyroidism today, not hypo, right? I just want to clarify it. Uh, what I you cut out. So what I'm saying is we are talking about hyperthyroidism. There are two types, right? Hypo Correct. Hy but hypo slow, hyper is fast. So hyper okay. is when okay. the thyroid is, is too fast. It's when um, the TSH number is actually low um, on a blood test. It essentially will do, um, it, it's basically opposite. So the hyper is really, really fast. So the hypo is really, really slow. And I see both um, come to me um, with that, when you get this TSH number that's really, really um, off, um, it's it's super common. It's more common to see it slow where mm -hmm. hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism is less common, but it's definitely out there. Um, and I see quite a few women with both. Okay. But to, in this topic, we're talking about hypo, right? Yeah. Um, yes. All right. So so let's just go a little bit uh, uh, further as far as what kind of symptoms would, would someone see if they are suffering from hyper? From hyper? Yes. Um, usually the, the, the hallmark one is fast heart rate. They, um, there's a lot of sweating involved. Okay. Um, typically can't sleep. The thyroid's in overdrive and thyroid, your master glance. So when it's in overdrive, when it's constantly pushing, 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 yes. um, your everything's sped up. So your metabolism sped up. Sometimes you actually have even digestion issues, um, because the, the, the digestion's even sped up. Like, um, everything's affected in the body. Um, even like the adrenals, um, will get affected. Um, you can almost feel like you're in like this fight or flight mode all the time mm -hmm. because the thyroid never really is shutting off. It's always going, going, going. Mm -hmm. Um, and I see that very commonly. Um, actually I see it really commonly too, when, um, someone actually was hypo first where they were slow, mm -hmm. put on thyroid medication and then the medications working too much or mm -hmm. they're over medicated, they actually go into hyper. Um, and then it's, um, you know, definitely like it, you are wide awake. You can't sleep. Um, the fast heart rate is a really, really hallmark one that I see a lot with it. And just to clarify, this is the thyroid gland, right? Yeah, here. right here. It's, it's a butterfly. It's a butterfly shape. Uh -huh. a butterfly thyroid gland. So, yeah. so let's just uh, figure out the diagnosis when you have to become a detective and try to figure out, you know, why it is not being diagnosed properly. What, what are the next steps then? So it's tough because the typical hallmark, like I, like I said earlier, the typical hallmark test to look at your thyroid is TSH. Um, a lot of doctors will check that, give you the diagnosis, whether it's hyper or hypo. Um, and it's tough when, you know, if you have a lot of symptoms going on, but, um, you know, you may get a diagnosis, you might not get a diagnosis. Um, and when you don't get that diagnosis, but yet you're having all the symptoms, um, that's time to do more digging. So there's something else present that is making that thyroid go crazy and go too fast. Um, it could be an autoimmune response. Um, Graves disease is the autoimmune side of hyperthyroidism where um, your thyroid is getting attacked by your own body um, and these antibodies are present. And um, unfortunately the thyroid can, can in some t times get sped up even worse. So it's like, you have to dig in like, okay, well, even if I don't have a diagnosis here, but I'm having all these symptoms, something's not right here. So that's when I like to work with my clients and look at what else is going on here that is making your thyroid not function at an optimal rate, whether it's slow or fast, but of course we're talking about fast. Um, typically there are some, there could be some gut dysfunction going on. 
Um, minerals could be really, really imbalanced. We look at that. Um, and I do like to look at your sex hormones because mm -hmm. the sex hormones and the thyroid are so interconnected as long as, as well as the adrenal glands. So mm -hmm. I look at the whole picture to figure out why, why is this pattern here? Why is this, why is this happening this way? But what type of test would you do? Like the sex hormones would be progesterone and yep. uh, yep. Right, yep. so, so what kind of different testing is involved? So the, the testing that I do, um, one of the, my favorite tests um, that I use is called a Dutch hormone panel. And it is um, a urine test that you do it at home and you do it over the course of 24 hours. So one of the reasons why I love this test is exactly why I just said it's 24 hours. So you get a better picture of what's going on with your adrenal glands. You get a better picture of what's going on with the sex hormones because it's over this time frame where it's not just like, here's your blood draw snapshot. You're going to get a bigger picture. So it will look at all your sex hormones. So progesterone, um, testosterone, um, estrogen, how you're breaking those down. The really cool part about that test is it also looks at are you even detoxing estrogen? And we know estrogen is kind of a nasty hormone to get recycled. Um, mm -hmm. So it looks at, are you breaking it down? Are you detoxing it? Are you getting rid of it after you use it? Um, and then the cortisol pattern as well, um, which can be a really big connection um, with a slow thyroid or a fast thyroid. And if you're, you know, in your, this constant fight or flight feeling, mm -hmm. um, when you have a really fast thyroid, a lot of times I will also see the cortisol pattern where they're just pumping out cortisol left and right. And it's, it's, you know, because their thyroid is giving this feedback, like you're fast. So everything else needs to be fast. Um, so I'll see that quite often. And then I also utilize um, hair tissue mineral analysis, which um, is a hair tissue sample that looks at your metals and minerals. Um, it looks at if there's metals present, because that can always wreak havoc on a lot of things in the body, particularly the thyroid. And then it also will give me a, an idea of what's going on with the minerals. Because when there's a mineral imbalance, that can also cause the metabolism to speed up and the thyroid to speed up. There's a big connection there. So I really dive into those two. Um, and then also gut testing is another one that I utilize um, because the gut is so connected to the thyroid, um, which is kind of an, not a, a common thing to really um, talk about, but the, the gut health is a big one um, because if there's parasites, bacteria, things like that, there's th that can be a really big connection of what's happening with the thyroid as well. Um, so we we will dive into that too, um, if necessary. Sure, sure. And th this uh, particular condition is more more common amongst women, right? I mean, yeah. at least that's yeah. the data I have seen. And why? Yeah. Well, because we have all these uh, things going on in our body, from PMS to fertility yeah. to yeah. Menopause. Yeah, I think a lot of it is because there is women. For one, we have so we have to deal with so much more hormone stuff than yeah. men do. And I always use the analogy of a triangle, your adrenals, your sex hormones, and your thyroid make a triangle and they all have to play along, you know, and get along nicely. Mm -hmm. And um, we deal with way more with that stuff than men have to with our cycling and things like that. So I think that's a really big connection. Yeah. Um, and as well as, you know, women are more tuned to like be using beauty care products mm -hmm. and hair products and all these things on our bodies way more than men probably do. Um, and there's a big connection there. I go really into like liver health even. Um, to to look at okay was that affecting your thyroid because mm -hmm. there was a connection there too and so I think there's a lot of factors there but women's dealing with the hormone side we definitely you know we got the short on the straw there like we definitely have to really really get um, hone in on the hormone stuff way more than men do and I think that's why the thyroid can get affected so easily compared to men. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, so now you've played the detective, you know, mm -hmm. you've gone through all your mineral tests, Dutch tests, now comes the actual um, treatment part, right? And yeah. so functional nutrition, you probably also use lifestyle yeah. along with the nutrition. So just a framework of what will happen after this. Yeah, so um, we always, uh, testing is always my go-to thing. We do that um, typically right away in the beginning of working with me, and then we go into lifestyle um, sort of in the middle of that while doing all that. And then we really hone in on lifestyle after we've gone through the testing stuff. Um, lifestyle is really big. And this is something that I, I struggled with myself when I was going through all my thyroid stuff. Same picture was um, I didn't realize that like, and I talked about beauty hair products. I didn't realize that that could affect um, what my thyroid was doing. So we look at um, nutrition. I really look at nutrition more in depth based off your testing. So it's not a cookie cutter approach. Mm -hmm. um, we look at what what minerals are you deficient in? What foods do we need to push there? Mm -hmm. um, 
Do you need to eat more carbs? Do you need to eat less carbs based off your own individual testing? Mm -hmm. um, and then are there foods that we need to like really look at and cut those out that are inflaming you? Um, because the, a lot of times people don't realize like, oh my gosh, um, I, you know, I eat gluten every single day and they're not realizing like that's affecting your actual thyroid health. So we look at those and then we go into um, stress management. It's a really big one. It's a huge one. Again, mm -hmm. it's connected to your um, thyroid pretty drastically. Mm -hmm. um, we look at sleep as well, which is a big one. A lot of people ignore that part. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's a, a big connecting factor as well. Mm -hmm. um, again, the, the detoxification and liver, um, that's a whole another section that we go into. And then gut health is a really big section that I go into because that's another one that really isn't looked at a lot. So we look at, um, even if, it, you know, outside of the testing part, mm -hmm. um, what sort of things are you eating or doing to your body that is actually affecting your gut health? Mm -hmm. Thyroid hormone conversion, a lot of it happens in the liver and the gut, you know, over 60% happens in the liver, like 20% ish happens in the gut. So those two areas we have to look at, um, what are you doing inside your life? Um, you know, are you drinking alcohol all the time? Are you eating inflammatory foods? Are you super stressed out all the time and not doing stress management? Are you staying up till midnight? So I look at all these things mm -hmm. that are affecting your thyroid health that you probably are not thinking about. Yeah, and but it's not only the food, right? It's not right, right. That's it's a huge factor. Um, mm -hmm. And like I said, we go into that, but that is not, and, and that's the, the tough part, um, you know, you can, it's a lot of people think they can correct it all with just food. It's important. Um, mm -hmm. But what I started noticing was food was not the only thing. There were so many other things um, that needed to be looked at um, mm -hmm. and, and need to be addressed because the, the food part isn't the only, it's not the only thing that's going to help it. It helps, but um, the other things need to be looked at. So is there a correlation between the weight gain uh, as well? Do you see women who come with this issue, they are a little bit on the heavier side? Is that an Yes. So I usually see more of the weight gain stuff in the kind of post-thyroid. I see weight gain with them. Um, sometimes once in a while, um, some of the hyperthyroidism where the, the thyroid is fast, I will see um, weight gain present. And that's typically someone who's so far gone. Um, they've really been dealing with for a while. And now their adrenals are completely like, I don't know what to do anymore. Their sex hormones are a train wreck. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they probably are not living the healthiest lifestyle then I probably will see um, some weight gain there. Typically, um, uh, if someone comes straight to me that, um, you know, just got diagnosed, um, you know, not really doing anything yet, uh, sometimes um, I usually will see actually weight loss. Um, but general rule, um, if they're really far gone, um, with the thyroid being too sluggish, um, that means everything else is kind of like, I don't know what to do anymore. So you will see weight gain, correct. All right. So uh, what would you tell, like from a nutrition point, point mm -hmm. of view, since you are a functional nutritionist, is there a particular type of food groups that uh, women should focus on versus something else? Okay. So I typically, I'm always going to recommend get those whole foods in, <laughs> get a lot of whole mm -hmm. foods in. So lots of vegetables, um, mm -hmm. fruits are great as well. Those starchy mm -hmm. carbs are really, really important um, mm -hmm. for thyroid health. Um, I generally don't recommend to cut carb. I don't, really recommend to cut food groups out, carbohydrate, protein, fat, you need all of them. Um, so I kind of tweak that based off your testing, um, how much you need more of or less of. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm generally not going to um, say, yeah, don't ever eat carbs or don't ever eat fat. Um, we just kind of tweak that amount um, as far as that goes. But mm -hmm. vegetables are crucial. They're very, very important. Lots mm -hmm. of veggies, protein source, that protein source can be um, if you're okay with eating chicken, beef, you know, meat, that's okay. Um, mm -hmm. I have some clients that they'd rather get it from sources like pea protein, um, hemp, stuff like that. That's okay too. It has to be kind of what works for you. Mm -hmm. um, and then getting healthier fats in as, as well, not these inflammatory fats. So we're talking like nuts and seeds, um, healthy fats um, inside the, the protein sources, um, like avocado, things like that. They're, they're, those whole foods are going to be your best bet um, to because the more you eat those, that means less processed foods you're having, less inflammatory foods that you're having. Sure. Well, thank you so much, Angela. I think you've given a blueprint, a, yeah. an a blueprint of what people yeah. do. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. How would you summarize um, 
so something that I always bring up with um, when I'm talking to anyone, particularly in the thyroid world, is if you are still having symptoms, so you've gone to your doctor, you have been diagnosed, um, or maybe not diagnosed even, mm -hmm. if you're still having symptoms, keep digging. There's the, Your body's telling you that for a reason. Mm -hmm. And working with so many women with um, thyroid condition, mm -hmm. I've really seen where a lot of women, um, they're so frustrated because they, um, you know, they have all these symptoms, but they're being told your, your blood test looks normal. Mm -hmm. um, make sure you're getting a full thyroid panel. That's my mm -hmm. other big takeaway. It needs to be a full thyroid panel. So TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse mm -hmm. T3, and then the thyroid antibodies, TPO, um, and thyroid globulin. Um, so TGAB, um, those are crucial. That will give you a really big picture of, okay, is your thyroid fast? Is it slow? Is it not optimal? You'll get a really better, big picture than just that TSH number. Thank you. Uh, we have a question on frozen shoulder. I'm sorry, we are not discussing frozen shoulder today. We yeah. are discussing thyroid. So if you have a question <laughs> on thyroid, we're happy to take it. Um, <laughs> I don't want to go off, uh, you know, kind of sideways here on a dirt road and discussing something that we are not supposed to. Um, but thank you so much. And, and yeah. if, if anyone has any question on thyroid issues, uh, yeah. please feel free to, to put it in the comments. Angela, thank you so much for yeah, you us. Bet. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yes, great. It's a great session. Everyone, you've got the blueprint. What to do? And mm -hmm. let's give it to you. So follow it. That's all I want to end this session with. Thank you. Bye-bye.